You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Young and the Restless fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt. And of course, you know that YNR saw many character exits this year, some bigger than others, some more violent departures than others. We're going to talk about everybody who left the CBS Soap in 2023. But first, if you haven't already, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates, spoilers, and news. First and foremost... Crystal Khalil is out as Lily Winters. She's on maternity leave. No word on how long she'll be gone. Her last episode was in early December. And, you know, likely she'll be out a couple of months. Unfortunately, while Lily is gone, Heather is making moves on Daniel Romilotti. So let's hope that Lily doesn't stay gone too long or else she's going to lose her man for good. Greg Rickart is back as Kevin Fisher and Judith Chapman as his mother, Gloria Abbott Bardwell. But I expect now that they spent the holidays in Genoa City and had that vow renewal, I think they're probably going to both head back out of town. Rickart and Chapman are both busy working at Days of Our Lives right now as well. Now, the next two I'm going to list haven't technically exited, but they are on recurring and we haven't seen them for a while. Mariah Copeland and Tessa Porter, uh, you know, they're not gone for good, but their last episode was in early November when their daughter Aria got fitted for her hearing aids. I'm sure we'll see them again in 2024, but I'm considering them an exit for now because it's almost like they're just doing cameos at this point. Trisha Cast was in and out a few times this year as Nina Webster. She was last around when her son Chance Chancellor was shot in the line of duty. I do expect her back probably at some point in 2024, but she exited Young and the Restless in November. Tad Luckenbill was briefly seen in 2023 as J.T. Hellstrom. That recent appearance was on a video call with Elena Dawson. She was trying to get JT to come back to Genoa City to distract Victoria, who was busy trying to steal Nate from Elena back then. JT refused, and Elena, of course, ended up losing Nate. Michelle Morgan was back as Amanda Sinclair Sinclair for nine episodes, ending in April 2023. She showed up to defend Chancellor Winters when Devon decided to sue. And of course, she was the perfect lawyer because she still was holding a grudge against him for cheating with Abby Newman. And of course, he's since moved in with Abby and is playing Little Happy Nuclear Family. The Bicentennial Gala saw Patty Weaver back as Gina Romilotti. She came back with her brother, Danny, who has since returned to stay a while to torment us with that dusty love triangle. The gala also brought back gossip maven Liana Love, who then had another appearance when Tucker used her in a smear campaign against Billy Abbott. Zach Tinker showed up almost a year ago as Fenmore Baldwin. His last episode was January 30th. He showed up with his boyfriend, came out of the closet, then left Genoa City again. Devon Hamilton's biological mother, Yolanda Hamilton, returned in 2023. Actor Shanae Lawson originated the role, and then she reprised it this past year. She showed up as part of the tribute to Neil Winters when they dedicated the Jazz Lounge at the GCAC to him. Also back for the dedication was Shamar Moore as Malcolm Winters, and it's always great to hear from him. Always lovely to see him because he is such a hunk. Judah Mackey, who plays Connor Newman, left town. Uh, Chelsea took him to boarding school, and he hasn't been seen since August 21st, although the young actor celebrated his 100th episode that day. I'm sure he'll be back at some point. The same for Paxton Mishkind, who plays his half-brother, Johnny Abbott. He hasn't been seen since May 25th. I expect we'll see both boys sometime in 2024. Noah Newman, played by Rory Gibson, had his last episode on April 21st, and his on-screen gal pal, Kelsey Wang, who plays Ali Nguyen, has also been done for a while. She was done April 18th. Those two are supposedly on an extended stay in Europe. However, I do suspect we may soon see more of Noah because Rory Gibson posted a photo a few weeks back showing him on the CBS lot doing something. TV presenter and former Daily Show correspondent Mo Rocca showed up as Milton 
Nikki's accountant at Newman Media, who has a huge crush on her. He was in and out, just one episode, kind of a weird, weird little cameo. Another interesting cameo was Kim Douglas, who is Jerry Douglas's widow. And of course, you'll know he played John Abbott. She showed up as a character named Zelda Wilford. She was on just one episode, June 22nd. That was a special episode devoted to John Abbott that aired for the show's 50th anniversary. So one of my favorite returns in 2023 on Young and the Restless was one I thought left way too fast. That was uber villain Cameron Kirsten played by Lyndon Ashby. It felt like his storyline was far too short for such a very good bad guy. He just had, you know, a few episodes and he was done right after Sharon killed him. Fun side note, if you didn't know it, in real life, Lyndon Ashby is married to Susan Walters, who plays Diane Jenkins. I just felt like his storyline, as bad as he is, could have been stretched to a few months and it was over instead in a few weeks. Speaking of crazy Cameron, Faith Newman was last seen in 2023 as part of his storyline. Raylan Castor showed up most recently bringing Faith's cat from college long enough for Cameron to kill that kitty and kidnap Faith. The traumatized young lady soon headed back to school out of town and who can blame her? Another villainous exit that I personally thought was over too soon was James Hyde as Jeremy Stark. He had so much potential and, like Cameron Kirsten, was gone way too fast. James Hyde was, first of all, he's just a really hot silver fox. Second, He was part of Diane Jenkins' twisted past that I thought could have been explored a little more. Remember, Phyllis brought him to town to torment Diane. I think they could have done a much slower burn with Stark, kept him as a longer-term villain by not engaging in the whole lame brain Phyllis fake death plot. It's too bad they didn't write something better because I think he would have been a good long-term scheming partner for Phyllis and all of her chaos. But Red killed him after he tried to kill her, and his last episode was June 2nd. Tied to that Stark storyline was Carson the Shady EMT, played by Walter Belenke. He had a handful of episodes, and he was used by Stark and then Tucker to both try and control Phyllis because he was part of the testimony about the fake death plot. And of course, the most recent exit is the excellent Colleen Zink as Jordan Howard. She's been arrested. We may get some more of her in 2024. If they even bother to do a trial or for some reason Claire comes to see her psychotic great aunt at the prison or she might just be gone for good because she did an extraordinary amount of damage to Nikki Newman and the rest of the Newman family. Good riddance to bad rubbish, although I will say, again, this is a villain I thought was gone too fast because Colleen was so darn good as kooky, vengeful Jordan. All right, those are all the major exits from Young and the Restless in 2023. If you haven't, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our YNR updates, spoilers, and news. Definitely drop your comments on who you were sad to go, who you were happy that they were gone. Let me know what you guys think. Come back soon. Of course, this is Belinda, and we are here talking YNR seven days a week as always. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 